We're glad to have you back. It's still the run-up here. We've been having interesting conversations and um, just talking among ourselves and uh, um, presidential candidates running away from debates, uh, agriculture neglected to the background when it should be the number one export um, mm -hmm. provider, as it were, export foreign ex exchange earner and all that. We've been talking uh, with ourselves. And news has made headlines and all that. We promised that when we come back, we're going to continue with what we were saying mm. before now. Uh, was it on the presidential and the new Naira notes? New Naira notes. <laughs> notes. So what is your take? <laughs> why, why? <laughs> <laughs> Am I high? <laughs> okay. Um, I, I don't see any much difference. I don't know. And that's, that has been what has been trending on Twitter. Mm -hmm. You know, how that... Jared, like what what exactly did we change i think it wasn't i think for the people that you know um initiated this change i think it wasn't about the design and mm -hmm. you know the mm -hmm. look and you know all the aesthetics no i think it was more about you know most of the reasons that they gave one of which bio had already mentioned how that they want to bring back most of these monies which are you know outside the banking system to bring them home and i think they've achieved if i'm not exaggerating at least 70 percent of that because within the first uh few uh weeks of this announcement, few first few days of this announcement, uh, they they were able to get some billions, and that's mm. a whole lot of money. So, for all the people that are complaining that <laughs> they just changed the color or whatever the words you know they use on Twitter and on the street is, it's beyond the aesthetics. It's beyond the looks. It's more about you know national development. It's more about uh, uh, the economic perspectives to so it. so long as the value didn't <clears throat> didn't drop and and they're achieving what they were intended to achieve mm. as we applaud the Fed, um, the central bank for bring, innovating this as we applaud the federal government for trying to do this to achieve what they achieve there's another trend that is making me so sad i don't know whether bio you are also <laughs> feeling the same way i'm feeling the fact that because of this change of narrow notes there are some people who have gone to their wherever they kept this money and have exhumed them mm. money in millions and billions that are now discovered to have been destroyed mm. like the moisture has destroyed the money the other day i watched a video of a truckload yes. of 1000 naira notes and they were all bad and i felt so pained <laughs> I, I like <laughs> like how do these people even think? Yeah. This is money you can you can build houses for everybody in your in your in your in your village. You can send everybody to school. You can do a lot of things. And at the end of the day, all we take and we leave is our name. Why don't people think about about posterity? Why don't people think about legacies? A man who doesn't think about legacy is the most dangerous man, if you ask me. Mm. Because he doesn't care. If I die, I don't go, I don't go. It is, a, it, is. It, it is what it is. It's so wrong. But that is me. I don't know for them. Maybe they, mm. they, they think differently. Bio, does it, does it pain you the, the way it pains me, Bayo? <laughs> Definitely. Um, we need a complete reorientation. And, you know, when we talk about values, um, you, you and I know, because with Richard, we've always discussed this, you know, of when, when we are not lying, we've discussed these things. And I personally believe strongly that our, the collapse of our value system is the biggest problem we have. Yes, we have challenges with leadership, but it is the collapse of our value system. Because when you don't have a good value system, even when a good leader emerges, you will frustrate that 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 would be that because you're, you because you will not want to accept to do things the right way, you know. So why would people keep such you know stupendous amount of money in their homes, you know, especially given the benefits you mentioned, the things they can do with it, you see. But also allied to that is what I mentioned earlier, how we treat the naira. People trample on the naira at parties. People use the naira and stone. Okay, they want to give the celebrant some money. Why don't you just put it in an envelope and give to the celebrant? They stone the celebrant with the money. 
They throw the money into the air. Do oh, you know this? Honestly, if anybody in from another clime looks at us as a people, they are really going to be stunned in trying to exactly articulate our mindset. So these are things that we need to change. And the, the incoming leadership, 2023, they need to start thinking of how to reorientate our values and how to make sure that we are caught. They, they work also to make sure the Naira improves its value, you know, and that we treat the currency with respect. I mean, how would they know that we're Nigerians? If you don't show money at parties, you know, it's, it's not, it's funny, but it's not actually. I it mean, is not. And it's actually becoming a trend. If you go to America, the UK, they now have what they call Nigerian parties. They just mm. throw it, and it's an event, and people mm. gather yeah. just so they can throw money in the air. Some it, have machines that, yes, you know, that make now, the money fly. You know, you make it fly in the what? air. It, it, it's not, it's actually unfortunate that, you know, that is one of the things that we are known for being disrespectful to such uh, things as our, our, as our, our money notes. It's not nice, actually. Uh, and, and just like Bayer said, I want to agree with him. It, there's a lot of reorientation that needs mm. to be done. Part of which is, why are you scared of the banks? Why do you have money stacked in your homes, mm. in your warehouses and in your wherever? And then the money gets destroyed. The, it, there are some people who genuinely <clears throat> as, cannot go to the banks because maybe where they stay, because maybe they will always need someone to guide them when they go to the bank and they don't want that. They, they put it in their pillow and the rest. But we are more worried about these people who <clears throat> ordinarily should be rich people. Mm. And then you're still storing money that you don't need. And then there are people languishing in abject poverty where you come from, around you, even among your boys, the people they call boys now mm. in the political scene and everywhere, boys. Mm. So you take what we call Ghana must go, you load money that you don't need, put it in somewhere that until it gets bad, you don't have any need for it. I think it's poverty mentality. You know, one thing I haven't really come to understand about this Naira redesign is how this whole whatever happened to the Naira is supposed to boost the Naira and increase the value. I mean, we understand how we are trying to gather our monies that are outside the banking system achieved almost 100%. How is this supposed to help our Naira you know, thrive? How is it supposed to give us bragging rights in the Forex market? How? Well, I think, well, I, I'm not an expert, so it might be very wrong, <laughs> totally wrong. But, but you see, it's like having an accurate census. Mm -hmm. Right now, the central bank does not even know how much is out there. It's mostly like an estimation. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if this money comes back, it's like knowing the correct data and you can plan well. That's what I can say. I might be so wrong, <laughs> totally wrong. No, uh, I think you're right. Uh, I'm not an economist either. But, but I could add to that, you know, because it's a very good question which I has asked. The fact also that when you capture money outside of the banking system, you also now, you know, you also give the banks, you know, the latitude to have more money to loan out for businesses. Okay? Because the banks are not just going to keep the money. If you put your money in the bank, the bank has to put the money to use, you know, and then maybe pay you some reasonable interest rate and things like that. But, but the, the, the long and short of it is that you increase the amount of money that the bank is liable to loan out to people who need it for investment, who can therefore also increase employment, and then you have the multiply effect of that whole chain. Okay, let's move on to another thing because we cannot finish this conversation. We'll keep talking about it and getting to know more so that we too can help to tell the people who ask us questions about the real need for all these things that happen mm. uh, in Nigeria. Okay, but there is not another worrisome thing. The National Association of Resident Doctors are now saying it is a hundred, mm. oh, 10,000 patients to one Nigerian doctor. Huh. Because right now, over 4,000 of their members are still ready to what we now call Jakba to get out of the country because of whatever reason. But there is no way you can have it better in Nigeria and you decide to go somewhere else. So it's worrisome. How can 10,000 people rely on one doctor? It's, mm -hmm. it's devastating. 
uh, you see, I'm taking my time, right? <laughs> <laughs> because I cannot, I cannot imagine it. Uh, you, you go take for a, for example, Lagos University Teaching Hospital. Mm. Have you seen how big that place yeah. is? And they have surgeon mm. patients day in, day out. Mm -hmm. I'm just imagining ten thousand of these people to one doctor spread across Nigeria, mm. uh, different parts of the country. It's, it's not, and, and, and you know, that also goes to speak for how dilapidated, you know, the sector is, if from the buildings to even the, the, uh, manpower. the manpower, human resources and all that. People are complaining. This video showed up on the internet. I think I spoke about it on Friday, about how that patients are on the uh, uh, walking halls, mm -hmm. yeah. on the floor. It's crazy. We don't even have enough a bed to hold these people no beds no space nothing and then there is this crazy trend that if you go to some of these villages there are hospitals i'm quoting that hospitals that have opened recently they just in lagos state they just caught one of the fake doctors only god knows how many surgeries he has done mm. as a fake doctor only God knows how many prescriptions he has made. Only God knows uh, how many people have died through uh, misdiagnosis uh, or wrong prescription or wrong surgery or something like that. That I've is had, in Lagos. I've but if you people, go into villages, yes, there's I've so many. I've had people call in on programs. You know, I've heard people call in on programs, radio programs, TV programs, and they are saying... We have these buildings that were donated to us by one of our illustrious sons mm. or illustrious daughters, or maybe the United Nations came to our village and they built a hospital, but we don't have doctors. Mm. We don't have nurses. Nothing is happening in that place. It, it's not even open. Yeah. So villagers uh, tend to, if you, if you are a very, a very good nurse, they call you doctor in Nigeria. You're what a pharmacist. To the you're place doctor. of volunteering. You, are, you're, you know, there are so many things to talk about. Yeah. What happened to the place of volunteering? Uh, I, I, I don't even know how I'm going to put this, but I do know that there were times in the past when people graduate from school and they just want to volunteer until something happens. Until now they'll volunteer for six months and then use their volun <laughs> volunteering uh, experience and go to another country. <laughs> Goodness. But, but, yeah, but, you, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know um, I think that the problems we are having, um, of course, economic problems, uh, problems of insecurity, uh, other socioeconomic challenges are inducing people to consider alternatives, you know, to get out of the country. Now, so again, like I would say, we are heading to elections. We need to be asking those who are aspiring. They shouldn't avoid debates. They should tell us how they want to deal with these issues. The second thing is that we need to recognize that given the way the world has evolved and given the way talents are acquired, because now they don't talk about human resources. They talk about talent acquisition. Most organizations, most governments from around the world look for the best talent wherever they can find it and they go for it. So our, our uh, if you like, our human resources will be increasingly the target of other countries who are not producing as much uh, or do not have potentially the same manpower capacity as we have. This is just the reality we need to face. So if you want, if you want the best doctor, you go for it. If you want the best engineer, you go for it. Now, how do we keep our own in the face of this challenge? These should be the questions that those who want to rule, those who want to aspire to power or aspiring to power, these are the things they should be addressing. And this is why debate is absolutely important. We want to know how they want to maintain a balance and make sure we don't lose too many. We are not going to stop people from leaving the country. We need to face that reality. But we can mitigate the exodus. What we are having now is threatening because it's an exodus and we need to mitigate that. Okay, as we're making the conversation about all these issues, uh, if you're watching us, I'm sure a lot of people that we are talking to indirectly here are watching us. If you're aspiring to rule us or to serve us, or you know someone who is doing that, we need to have that discussion 
come to us. Plus TV Africa is open to you. Come to us and tell us what you intend to do for Nigeria because we are all going to hold you accountable well, if you, you if you questions. get there. <laughs> if at all you will get there because, in fact, at this point, we should be saying, you don't talk to us, we don't vote for you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's how it's going to be. Even when they are burning uh, INEC houses, they just burned one in a, uh, in a Bonny state, and that's three in a space of like one month, which is not good. But whether houses or offices are burnt or not, election 2023 must happen. Yeah. And God willing, we'll make a good choice. So and this is where we draw the curtain on today's edition of The Run-Up. Thank you so much for everyone who has tuned in. At the Run-Up will return, but it will be tomorrow, 11 a.m. Until then, my name is Uchechuku Onodo. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. <laughs>